Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my review of the 1994 action thriller, The Getaway. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Mark for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, The Getaway is honestly a film that... I have been genuinely curious about for quite a long time. I saw the trailer for this on uh, one of the VHS tapes that I had back in the day, and I thought it looked like it could be a fun movie. And ever since, I've actually been wanting to check it out, but there's been all these other movies and all these other things that I've had on my schedule and it just kept getting lost in the shuffle. But I am really glad that this uh, was uh, requested because I loved this movie. I thought this film was a blast. It was a lot of fun. It was slick, stylish, full of charm, full of action. And full of some genuinely steamy sex scenes. Like, this was actually, in my opinion, one of the better remakes that nobody talks about. And it's also one of those films that, for whatever reason, when it came out, it didn't do well, either critically or financially. In fact, this made more money on home video than it did in theaters, and the critics hated this movie. Like, it got almost unanimously uh, negative uh, reviews in terms of its uh, reception. And it gets like a 33% Rotten Tomatoes. And Alec Baldwin even called it a bomb. And I think a lot of it is because of how people view it in comparison to the original with Steve McQueen. I've never thought the original was a masterpiece like other people did. It's almost like a similar sort of uh, way that I feel about uh, the Get Carter remake compared to the original Get Carter, where a lot of people are, are adamant about that being this uh, untouchable classic, and they think that the remake is uh, an insult and a disgrace because it dares to even attempt to tell the same story as the original and have the same name. So I think a lot of the vitriol for the getaway is due to that. And if you don't really have that kind of mindset going in, I think you can have a lot of fun with this, especially if you enjoy... 80s or 90s action movies like there's a fair amount of action in this it's well shot it's well done it's got a great cast and uh, i i honestly am willing to say it's one of my favorite action films from the 90s just after watching it once uh, I, I loved it so much that I went out and bought the Shout Factory Blu-ray as, as soon as possible, and it's on its way. Now, it's directed by Roger Donaldson, and after this, he did Species and a few other stuff, and he did some other movies before this. I think this is him at his best and at his peak. His direction in this was dynamic, it was strong. I thought it was spectacular. I thought he did an incredible job directing this movie. There are certain shots in this that are reminiscent of something you would see from Brian De Palma or Alfred Hitchcock in terms of the framing. Uh, and I, I just, I, I, I really feel that Roger gave everything that he had as a filmmaker to this film. And it really shows. Uh, and what's crazy is Roger was initially hesitant about even doing this movie. But then he decided to change his mind. And uh, I'm really glad for that because he 
did a, a great job with this film in terms of the way that he worked with uh, the camera angles and the perspectives and establishing shots and zooms and pans and all different kinds of camera work. Uh, the, the framing of his shots in particular is fantastic, especially in the uh, climactic uh, uh, shootout, uh, the ambush at the hotel. Uh, and yeah, the, the camera definitely has a good sense of fluidity to it. And it works really well when it comes to the various different amounts of action scenes that are in the movie, whether it's the car chases or the fist fights or the gun fights, uh, or the heist sequences and even scenes that don't have any action or, and are just trying to emphasize maybe uh, a certain kind of mood, like trying to be suspenseful or trying to be a little more intense. I feel that it really succeeds in that regard as well. And when it needs to be sexy, like the way that he shot the sex scenes in this was very slick, very stylish, and genuinely sensuous. Like uh, compared to... Other films that I've seen that have tried to do sex scenes, like, this is actually legitimately uh, uh, some well-shot sex scenes. And he also understood the the whims of the two stars, like, Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger, they were willing to do these really um, explicit sex scenes, but only if certain accommodations were given. And the accommodations were that they could shoot these scenes in relative private, you know, in, in, in a, in a closed room, closed set, except for the camera and the director and the director, uh, uh, agreed with, uh, their, uh, whims and, and, and what they were asking for. And it led to some really smoking hot scenes. And I think he did a good job getting some really strong performances out of everyone in his cast, not just the lead actors, but all of the supporting actors. He shot the various different sequences that featured uh, uh, gunplay or explosions in ways that were really emphasized the the uh, impact of, of those scenes. And yeah, I, I think Donaldson just did a damn good job with this film in terms of his direction. And I think the script was also pretty solid too by Walter Hill and Amy Holden Jones. Here's the thing. I, I see a lot of criticisms and critiques about this film. And a lot of it is about how it's unrealistic and it's cliched. And that's why it's bad. I'm like the original getaway wasn't realistic. And it even had some elements that could be considered cliched even back in the 70s. So the fact that this is criticized so harshly because of it being cliched for an action film or a heist movie or a thriller, I think is not really fair because of the fact that it does have aspects of it that are kind of unique. And also, it's just well executed for the most part. So what if it's cliched? Some cliches are cliches for a reason, because they are really successful, effective ways to tell a particular story or to handle certain elements of a script. And I think The Getaway ha has those aspects to it, but I never really felt like they were contrived or silly or dumb like other critics did also i think that yeah this isn't a movie that's gonna wow you or blow you away in terms of character depth or any of that but that's not really needed in this kind of movie this is more about the ride it's more about the thrill and i appreciate the fact that the script got that and one of the things I really love about this script is how charming it is. It has a lot of genuine charm to it when it comes to some of the, the dialogue, when it comes to uh, the moments of levity, when it comes to uh, scenes like 
the last uh, a few sequences involving Richard Farnsworth's character. There's just a lot of stuff about it that is genuinely charming. And I, I miss films like that. I miss action movies or thrillers that had that kind of, uh, of, of charm to them. You don't see that as much nowadays because a lot of people would just consider it to be cheesy or corny or whatever they want to call it. But I find it to be charming. And so it's, it's, it's always nice to see when I see another charming film and a charming a script like the one for the getaway. It's a very straightforward and, uh, you know, kind of typical plot. But like I said, so was the original, which, by the way, was based on a novel anyway. So the plot deals with the this husband and wife couple, Doc and his wife, Carol, and they they are uh, tasked with uh, doing a job for somebody and the job is to break some guy out of an armored car. Well, it's not really an armored car, but it might as well be to break this prisoner out of this car while he's on his way to uh, jail and they break him out. They take him to Mexico to the person who is paying for this job to be done but it was all just a setup so the guy could shoot the 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 other guy that was uh, broken out of prison, which is his cousin. And it's all a setup, basically. Whoever took the job was never actually going to be able to keep the money because they were going to wind up going to jail. And that's what happens with, with Doc. He gets caught. His uh, partner... In, in the job, who he thinks is his friend, uh, Rudy, is anything but. He's just a self-serving asshole, and so he just leaves him behind. And Doc winds up in jail, in the Mexican jail. And it's not looking good for him. And his wife, she winds up uh, meeting with this guy named Benyon, who uh, actually is somebody that... Uh, her husband brought up so a deal can be made so doc can get broken out of this mexican uh jail so then he can uh do this job for benyon which is uh, a heist uh, at a uh, racetrack and benyon agrees doc gets broken out but you don't necessarily know the full extent of the agreement. You kind of get a little uh, uh, hint that there might be more of a catch when it comes to the agreement for the for the heist and for breaking Doc out of jail than you might think. And then as the as the story unfolds, you find out that there was more of a catch to it, where Doc's wife, uh, Carol, in order to get Doc out of prison, she had to um, have sex with Benyon because that's uh, that's uh, what Benyon was asking for. And so that causes some initial disagreements and frustration between Doc and his wife once that realization set settles in, which is perfectly realistic and understandable. But then it doesn't dwell on it too much. After a certain point, they both get over it and they move on and they continue to uh, be a couple and they continue to uh, love one another and uh, go on the run and um, fight for each other. And Benyon, he hires his own team despite Doc asking for uh, his own uh, experienced um, uh, members to work with when it comes to the job uh benyon hires his own team instead and one of the guys that he hires happens to be rudy the guy who left uh, a dock to essentially rot in that mexican prison and so doc actually has a crowd-pleasing moment where he punches rudy in the face um don't fuck with me you know, I, I love that. I, I did, There's just a lot of things about this script that I really enjoy. And 
that's definitely one of those moments. So you have Benyon. He's trying to. He's setting up this team of uh, of uh, criminals and, or experts to rob the dog track. Benyon gets Doc released from prison, uh, and one of the guys who is a part of the team is Rudy, along with Hanson, who's an inexperienced guy. Yeah, yeah. Rudy is all like no hard feelings, and then Doc punches him. You know, don't fuck with me. No hard feelings. <laughs> and then at the track, while Doc winds up breaking into the vault, there's uh, there's some stuff that happens to the guard. Hanson shoots him. Uh, this creates a, a bit of a, of uh, a minor roadblock when it comes to the, the heist. But they get over it pretty quickly. They blow up a gas tanker as a distraction. And they escape with the money, uh, which is like over $1 million. The plan initially was for Doc and Carol to meet uh, uh, with Benyon and split the money. But then things go awry because Rudy decides that he wants to essentially take off with the money himself and kill everybody. But Doc was pretty much uh, assuming that Rudy was going to try to do that. And so he shoots Rudy uh, before they have their meeting with uh, with Benyon. Uh, but Rudy actually survives because he actually he decides to wear the bulletproof vest, even though he was adamant about not wearing it earlier. And all he gets is a shoulder wound. And so now Rudy is understandably trying to fi find uh, Doc and Carol and, and get the money and also get revenge on uh, Doc for shooting him in, in the shoulder and wounding him and ruining his plans. And Doc and Carol, they wind up going to Benyon's. And that's when uh, Benyon reveals, you know, the, the truth of, of the deal. Carol shoots Benyon. And then Carol and Doc reluctantly go together. Uh, and their plan is to go to uh, this um, hotel in El Paso so they can... Um, get uh, some passports and everything so that they can go to Mexico, which that part I'm like, okay, well he was in a Mexican jail. So wouldn't they know him? So they the plan is to go to Mexico, but wouldn't the authorities know that doc is, is, is a guy who uh, is on the run because that's eventually what happens is because of this series of events that involves the money and it being put in a locker at a, a bus station uh, that gets stolen by this uh, thief and then Doc has to get it back and he gets it back by beating the crap out of this guy. The guy who got the crap beat out of him goes to the authorities and so that, that leads to Doc and Carol now being considered uh the prime suspects in the uh robbery and so now they're wanted by uh the police and so now they're trying to make this getaway to el paso and to mexico but now they got to deal with the cops and not only that they got to deal with rudy who's uh who has revenge on his mind and benyon's men and it all culminates and comes to a head at the hotel in El Paso in a really exciting, thrilling uh, shootout that has a lot of uh, practical uh, uh, gun uh, squibs and gunplay and slow-mo and a lot of action. And even prior to that, there's still a decent amount of action. Like, there's a pretty tense and exciting car chase with Doc firing the shotgun out of the back of the, of the car when, while they're trying to escape from the police. And the, the climax is honestly one of my favorite uh, climactic shootouts 
I, I love the way that it was was uh, written, and I love the way that it was ultimately executed on screen. Uh, when it comes to the usage of slow mo shots and other things like that, I, it literally reminded me of John Woo. And whenever you can do that in a shootout, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing because it's like John Woo uh, at his best, like not John Woo now, John Woo uh, of the killer remake fame or infamy, but you know, the John Woo of like hard boiled. Like it reminded me of that with some of the slow mo and some of the way that the action was uh, choreographed. And I will admit, though, there are some p issues, like the whole stuff with uh, with Rudy and this couple that he essentially kidnaps, and Fran and Harold. He does that because Harold's a veterinarian and so he can treat his shoulder and then he, he takes Fran along because she's a hot piece of ass and then he essentially takes Fran away from Harold and Harold can't live with that so he winds up killing himself which is tonally a bit off when it comes to the tone of this film I have to be honest and there's a lot of stuff with Fran and Rudy that's just kind of there for me. There's also a lot of stuff with Rudy where, for whatever reason, Doc will just let him live. Like, he has the guy dead to rights, and then he will let him live. And it, it just seems... It, it just seems like it's a bit forced. I think they could have explained it a little bit better. Like, he can't shoot him now because then it'll, then it'll alert his... Uh, 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 location when it comes to all the other people that are trying to find him at this hotel. Uh, but it, that's not really clarified or made clear. So it just comes across like he just conveniently lets the guy live so then he can uh, be involved in the finale in the elevator. Which, by the way, I love that entire sequence. It's honestly one of my favorite kills in an action movie. It's a really cool uh, idea where you have Alec Baldwin's character, Doc and, and Michael Madsen's character, Rudy, and they get into this tug of war with the, with what you think is an unloaded empty shotgun. And Rudy, he's in the elevator. He's trying to escape from Doc and Doc has put the shotgun in between the, the elevator doors to prevent them from closing. And so, you know, Rudy and Doc are playing this game of tug of war with the shotgun and uh, Doc actually has some some ammo. And so he's like just still trying to keep the upper hand with this tug of war while putting the, sh the shells in and then he puts the shells in and then fires the trigger and, and shoots Rudy like you would think, okay, that that that's that in itself is pretty awesome and pretty badass. But he goes farther than that because then he shoots the elevator uh, uh watt cables and then sends the elevator careening down to the bottom floor. Really awesome, cool combo for a a, a death scene. And it's also another one of those scripts where you have a female character in uh, Kim Basinger's character Carol. But she's not dead weight. She can actually hold her own and 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 actually shoots the the guy who is the head of Benyon's army. Shoots him dead. She even takes out a few other people. So she can actually kick some ass herself. So that's nice to see. And it's one of those action thrillers. That, yeah, it's kind of predictable when it comes to the ending. Like they make it out and they get away. And they don't get caught and they go to Mexico, but then they make this old guy's day when they don't have to. They give this old guy like $40,000, this sweet old man, $40,000 for his old beat up truck. And then they go on their, their uh, own. They essentially are going to live the rest of their days in Mexico. Because they can't go back to the U.S. because of the fact that they're still considered prime suspects in, in the robbery. And probably who knows what else. But they get a happy ending. 
which is nice. And it feels earned because of everything these characters went through, Doc and Carol. They they literally got thrown away in the garbage at the garbage dump in one scene. So they've been through they they went through a lot of shit. So um yeah, I I genuinely really like this script. I think for the most part it's really good. It's a hell of a lot better than people make it out to be in terms of its sense of humor, in terms of the variety of action, in terms of the love story. Like I actually did buy that the two uh, main characters, Doc and Carol, had feelings for one another. And there's a lot of moments that provide some genuinely fun uh, uh, sequences and and lines that provide some extra moments of bonding for the two and they even have moments where there's a bit of strife and the relationship is on the rocks but then they smooth things out rather nicely and there's still some unique elements in the script like the elevator scene i just thought that was really cool and unique and different and yeah and even the stuff with Benyon, like I didn't expect that Benyon was going to get taken out as early as he did. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those scripts and stories that I think is honestly, for the most part, really satisfying. And the cast, I thought was great. I mean, Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger, the two have absolutely uh, electric just smoking hot chemistry in this. This is around the time when they actually were a real couple and it shows. Uh, this is the kind of chemistry that you can't necessarily replicate. Uh, this is this is the kind of natural chemistry that, that you get from two uh, actors who are actually really in love with each other. And so what you get is some really nice moments between the two of them, not just the sex scenes, uh, but also uh, moments of dialogue where there's a really good rapport with the two of them. And I think it's honestly one of Alec Baldwin's best film roles. He's just so effortlessly cool in this. His character is, is almost as cool as James Bond in this movie. Like he just has that kind of uh, a charisma and, and, and pull to him in this. And when it comes to the action, He's really capable, really good with a shotgun, for instance, equally as capable when it comes to using his fists. Uh, I genuinely love this performance by Alec Baldwin. And I know that Alec has a lot of controversy nowadays, but that wasn't the case back in 1994. And I, I've ended during his prime. And I will admit, like, Alec Baldwin in the 80s and 90s is one of my favorite actors. So I've always been a fan of his. And to see a film of his that's gone under the radar and to see another really just great performance by him is a real treat. It genuinely is. And Ken Basinger is a treat, too. Just a visual treat in more than one way in this. Just gorgeous. And surprisingly uh, able to hold her own when it comes to scenes with Alec or other people in the cast. And actually didn't really seem like she was that out of place when it comes to the action uh, scenes either. Uh, Michael Madsen was, was magnificent. I loved him as Rudy. Even with the mullet and all like it was <laughs> It was an interesting look, but Madsen pulled it off with his intensity and just fun. Like you could tell that he really enjoyed playing this character and was having a lot of fun playing this role. And it just led to a really enjoyable performance from an actor playing a pretty despicable piece of shit. Like the, Rudy is, is definitely a guy who is just an absolute prick. But Madsen just sold the role very well. And I felt he was actually a pretty good intimidating figure at times too. Even when he only has one arm, he was intimidating. 
because of it, the way that he handled the role, like it used his size very well. And James Woods, he was awesome. He was great as Jack Benyon, not in it a lot, but man, does he make the most out of the, the little screen time that he has just as smarmy, just as slimy and just as, uh, an enjoyable as always, when it comes to playing these kind of scumbags, David Morse was also really solid as Jim Deere, the, the guy who's the head of Benyon's task force, so to speak. Uh, he was intimidating in his own right as well. Jennifer Tilly was fine as Fran for what she was asked to do. So was James Stevens as Harold Carvey. Philip Seymour Hoffman is in this as Frank Hansen. He was the other guy who was a member of the team that Benyon set up for, for the heist. It was fun to see him again and another kind of role that you don't necessarily expect. And he did a good job playing the, the character very inexperienced uh, uh, guy who just got thrown into the job and um, did the best he could and actually didn't do that bad of a job for a guy that's relatively inexperienced, but then still wound up getting um, the raw uh, end of, of the deal, um, so to speak. And then you also have like Richard Far like Richard Farnsworth as slim. And I think I might've mentioned him earlier, but if I did, it so be it i, I want to mention him again because he just is, an, is another performer who just made the most out of very little he was only in it for like a couple minutes at the end but he made a very significant impact i know that he didn't want to do it or or he did it but then he regretted doing the film because of the fact that there was a lot of swearing in that scene i i don't think he should have any regrets because his presence in 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 this film was really welcome and uh, was genuinely endearing and wholesome and, and, and charming. I know that they're speaking of the cast. I read that Michael Keaton was actually considered to play Doc, the character that Alec Baldwin played in this. And that would have been fun to see Michael Keaton and Kim Basinger teaming up again after Batman. Uh, but I'm still glad that we got Alec Baldwin and the film features some nice cinematography by Peter Menzies Jr. It's well edited by Conrad Buff and it features a magnificent, just really great score by Mark Isham. I thought it was incredible with the usage of the guitar solos mixed with the instrumental work. And honestly, it's one of my favorite scores uh, from Mark. I think it's one of his finest works as a composer. And I even like the song at the end credits as well. And it's a film that had a pretty big budget at the time, like $30 million. And it's definitely on the screen. Like there's some big explosions. There's a lot of, uh, of money put into the various different sort of action sequences. And it's not a film that looks cheap by any means. And it was just, it is one of those movies where, you know what? It's just kind of nice to see another action film back from the time period when they did shit for real. They didn't do it behind a green screen. They didn't do it in post. They did all of this for real. The gunplay is real. There's blood squibs and people get shot. There's uh, real explosions. There's stunt people doing the real uh, car chases. There's real stunt people getting dumped into a garbage truck and then getting dumped out of a garbage truck. Like that, that's just the kind of stuff you don't really see as much of anymore nowadays because it, people just don't do that anymore because it's just considered to be old fashioned or uh, dated for whatever reason. But to me, real is never going to be dated and it never should be dated. Like if you're doing an action movie, do more of the stuff for real. Stop using CGI, but that's just me personally. Uh, but yeah, I, I highly recommend this movie. I really do. If you like eighties and nineties action films, like I highly recommend this. I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. I think you'll find a, a lot about it to be worth your while. But anyway, thanks for watching my review of the getaway and until next time I'll see you later. See ya.